We're gonna change oil on this side by side. It's Polaris HD 800 EFI. We keep it mint looking nice. And, and I'm not as good as some people. I don't have a chart. I don't really do a good job of keeping track of when I should change oil on this thing. The time I know to change oil on this rig is when it doesn't run very well. It's almost like a fuel problem, to be honest with you. It's just very, very lurchy, and that's what it's doing. So we're going to get her swapped out. Step one, remove trash from the bench seat. That's always a good thing. And we're going to pop that up. There's a shoe over there. That's neat. Oh, look at her. Mint. Huh? What'd I tell you? We keep her looking good. I'm not saying I'm proud of it, but I am saying it's a thing. And I forgot all this was in here. And man, I just found a whole lot of tools. That's exciting. This is my only pro tip here. Okay, the bench seat. Yeah, there you go, huh? Now, we can get to the drain plug under there. I'd like to say I'm a professional and I remember what size it is, but I don't. I will, uh, I'll tell you when I get it figured out though. There is a, what is that, a stick? How long has that been in there? Anyway, so there's a hole in the skid plate. Um, is it that one? Is it that one? Hold on. Where's the engine at? Where's the engine? Right there. No. There. It's that one. It's right there. That's to drain the oil. And I would like to think that the engineers are smart enough to put that there specifically to drain the oil. But based on the way the front drive shaft comes out of this thing, I think it's just purely coincidental. I can't remember what size it is. Fits pretty good. What is that? A six. Fantastic. Oh, that does not feel like it fits very good. All right. That does not fit. Okay, so that doesn't fit at all. It's a seven. A six. Strips. Neat. That's neat. The fun thing that I'm really excited about is I actually took this to the dealer last time to do this. The dealer in Newburgh, Indiana. It feels like it was stripped out before and somebody pounded a uh, Torx into it. But I'm going to have to get a closer look at it. Oh yeah, that's exactly. All right, I too pounded a Torx in there to get it out. I used a good eight pound sledge because that's convenient. <laughs> the sun's shining behind me, but it's also raining. So that's cool. As a testament to Polaris's phenomenal engineering skills, let me show you where the oil filter is located. It's right, it's down, it's right. There. No, that's a wire. There it is. Neat. Well, you just gotta get rid of the old reach around here and um, and not be able to get your hands on it because of the clearance issues. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Well, I got a hold of something. What is it though? I can't. I can't see. It's going by feel. I can't actually see it. Oh, come on. There we go. There we go. just that easy it just comes right off of there with hardly any effort at all nice just looking for the thread locker seeing what they put in there unnecessarily tight there's a seal for a reason 
so you don't have to put 272 foot pounds of torque on the oil filter. New oil filter, oil on the seal, see if we can get that threaded in there. I am using Polaris oil, 5W50, full synthetic, isn't that fancy? ATV Ranger, Razor and Snow, I'm assuming that means snowmobile. Or just filling her right down the dipstick tube. All right, I'm gonna hose it down just a little bit, just get this stuff out of there and get some of the dust off here. And some of this mud out of these areas here. We'll get her cleaned up just a touch. We're not gonna pressure wash it or make it anything fancy like that. This is a utility vehicle. We bought it for work, we didn't buy it for running trails or running parades with people with tall lights coming out the back. Stuff like that. I am curious though, this does make me want to know what side by side do you have and what do you think about it? I'm not, we're not in the market for another one. Frankly, we just don't have the money for it. And this one still runs and drives and operates. But if we ever were to get a different one, I'm just curious what's working well for people. I don't have any major complaints about this. There's just a few things that pop out to me that make me think that you know, there's probably better out there. This that I just pointed out being one of them. I don't know why you'd make a vehicle that's made to go off-road as a utility vehicle that has an upside-down channel like that to just catch all this stuff. I mean, they put holes for it to come out the bottom, but, you know, things like that. better be careful because one of these is the vent for the fuel tank and I don't want to fill it full of water oh that's the vent for the fuel tank probably ought to clean that off a little bit too so the fuel tank vent did go back through this tube like this but we had issues so it just hangs out in here now and I just sprayed water in there and it kind of reminded me of that but okay we're all right And not trying to make it spotless we're not gonna wax it or pressure wash it or anything crazy like that just trying to keep the mud traps empty try to get this frame last as long as we can short simple and to the point oil change on the Polaris Ranger 800 EFI and a little bit of a cleanup on those mud traps those dirt traps like we talked about like I said it hasn't been a bad machine it's been a good unit it's taken everything we've given it I'm just curious what everybody else has out there and what your all's thoughts on it. I just kind of want to be educated in the side-by-side -side market so if people ask questions maybe I've actually got a decent answer for them I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll definitely catch you on the next one which will be 